Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. This one is a little bit different because it is a multi-part series slash course on FontForge. Before I even say anything else, I do just need to make a disclaimer that this is not a typography series. This will not teach you what makes a font look good or be readable. This is about the technical aspects of getting your font to work. Now, uh, first thing you're going to need to do is get FontForge. Now, FontForge is provided free of charge because it is an open source software. For Windows, you just go ahead and download this exe file and just double click it, click next, uh, read through everything except the terms and so on and choose your preferences and then go ahead and finish installing that on linux it's very easy just open a terminal and add this repository update and then install fontforge and then on os x now the thing about uh fontforge on mac is that it's a unix application so the interface needs to be rendered through a different means so you just have to install a second software which is also open source and free X quartz and there's a detailed guide and a short guide here In the short guide you just download and install X quartz and then download font forge here and then once you open up font forge after installing it it'll work all right so now that you have it installed you can actually use it I'm gonna just open up a blank file here now this main menu is the glyph page and I didn't say a letter because Glyphs are more than just a single letter. For instance, one thing that happens in typography quite a bit is what's called a ligature. So for instance, the FI ligature, the phi ligature, like I'm showing on screen right now, is a combination of the letter F and I that's slightly different from the actual individual F letter and I letter, just to make it look a little bit nicer. So that's a separate glyph that when you type F and then an I, it combines them together into that one glyph. So this is your main glyph page. It shows all your glyphs. Um, this default encoding should be fine for most people, but if you do need some other language, you can go ahead and change your encoding there. So I'm gonna open up the capital letter A in the font editor by double tapping it. Now this is the font forge glyph editor and the glyph editor isn't as powerful maybe as something like Adobe Illustrator. And so if you're more comfortable with that and you've already designed characters and so on, you can import them here. And I'll show you uh, how to do that a little bit later. Um, this isn't a tutor tutorial on vector graphics. If you want to learn how to use the pen tool here using Bezier curves like this, you're going to want to either find a tutorial or go to this site, which I'm showing you right now, which just helps you to practice your Bezier curves. And it's very nice. I like it a lot. All right, so now that we're done with that, you can see the first thing that we need to keep in mind here is when you're drawing a character, you wanna draw it clockwise. Because oftentimes, as you know, characters will actually have little holes in them. For instance, the letter A, which I'm drawing right now. Now, because it has a hole in it, um, it's a little bit harder to design. Now you might think, okay, I'll just draw the hole here, clockwise like normal. But if you go ahead and do that, if you look over in our glyph, here, glyph window here, you'll see that there's not actually a hole in the character. So actually how fonts work is that they take the direction the path was drawn to define cutouts. So if we select these points here, we can go ahead and element uh, counterclockwise. And you can see that the letter A has a hole in it. This can go multiple levels down. For some reason, if you needed to have another section inside of a character, clockwise and then counterclockwise and clockwise and so on to define cutouts. So there we go. Now, if we close this out, there's a window in FontForge, which is used all the time. It's called the metrics window. So if we click metrics here, new metrics window, uh, it automatically puts in the character that you had selected. Uh, the glyph you had selected excuse me so if i type capital a there you go there's a capital a now if i type another capital a you can see they're spaced out quite a bit 
Uh, you can also zoom out by control scroll wheel. They're spaced out quite a lot more than they should be. Um, so in order to fix that, we're just gonna close that window and double click this A. You can see there's two lines on the left and the right. Go back to our selection tool on the left and the right. We have these two lines. This is at the start of our character and the end of our character. So we wanna drag start to about there and the end to about there. Now, if we close that out and go back to the metrics window, you can see that they're much more appropriately spaced. Now, there's also the top and the bottom. And these are these top and bottom lines are defined by your EM length. Now, if we go into our font info here, you can actually see uh, in the general tab, there's this M size and it's set to a thousand by default, which is perfectly fine. And basically the top and the bottom here, uh, those are a thousand units uh, apart. Now the bottom here, you can see another guideline. This is the uh, descending guideline for letters like Y and that sort of thing. If you wanna add your own guidelines, you can just go to this guide layer. Just take your pen, click, and then hold shift and click again. There we go. And then if you want to move it around, grab those two points and then move them down as low as you would like. And then you could just click and drag that line to what you want it to be. And then if you go back to your foreground layer, you can see that there's an extra guideline there, which will be in every single letter. There's also this background layer, which is quite useful because you can put, you can actually import images as well. You can import uh, images, SVGs and that sort of thing. You can import an image onto this background here of, for instance, a handwritten character so that you could trace it and match that up. Now, in order to set what your point is, as you can see, these square ones are corners, these are curves, and there's also some other ones. There's the HV curve, corner, and then there's tangent. Now, I know this was a bit of a quick one. I'm going to do a second part, hopefully quite soon, that will cover a whole lot more stuff. And this series will be about maybe eight videos, 10 videos, something around there. All right, and with that, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, go ahead and leave it a like. And if you're feeling especially nice, go ahead and subscribe. And with that, I will see you guys later.